Okay, by request, we're going to take a look at some questions from the first two units for review. And after this, we only have two more class periods left. On one of the days, we're going to take a look at some solid geometry review, but if you have um, another topic you'd like to take a look before your final exam, please let me know. All right, in number one. In the accompanying diagram, line AOB is a straight line, and the measure of AOD is 3x minus 12, and the measure of BOD is x. Find the value of x. Remember, we have complementary and supplementary lines, which we put on our study card. Complementary adds up to 90, but supplementary, so this linear pair here, two angles that form a straight line, remember if we draw the angle that's formed, it looks like a protractor, in which there is, and again, a protractor goes from 0, 90 here to 180. So there's 180 degrees in this straight angle. So 3x minus 12 plus x equals 180 degrees. Combining like terms, actually, I'm going to add the 12 over first and then combine like terms. So 3x and x is 4x equals 192. Divide 192 by 4, and we get 48. So x is equal to 48. And number 2, it says that lines a, B, and C, D intersect at point E. So here's the point of intersection of those two lines. The measure of A, E, D is given. So if you trace A, E, D, this angle is given, which is 3X plus 11 and C, E, B, tracing, that's this angle. These two angles that are directly opposite when two lines intersect are called vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent. So we set their measures equal. So 125 equals 3x plus 11. Subtract 11 and divide by 3. 5 minus 1, 4. 2 minus 1, 1. So 114 divided by 3, we get 38. So x is equal to 38. Okay. Number three says if the angles of a triangle are represented by x, 3x plus 20, and 6x, the triangle must be. Well, we know that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we combine like terms, we have 6x plus 3x, which is 9x, plus 1x, I'm going to use the space right here, is 10x. Whoops, not 10x equals because we have another term when we add or in the expressions that we're adding and that's a positive 20 equals 180. So subtract the 20, divide by 10, we end up with x equal to, cancel out the zeros, 16 x is equal to 16, okay? We have to classify the triangle as isosceles, which means two congruent sides. Obtuse means we're going to have an angle, I'll use theta, greater than 90. Acute means we're going to have an angle, say theta, less than 90. And then with the right triangle, we have one angle theta, which equals 90. So to plug the angles in, this angle is 16 degrees. And then 3 times 16 is 48. Oops, we've got to add the 20. I keep forgetting that 20. So 48 plus 20 is 68. And then 6 times 16 is 96. Because of this 96 degree angle, it is an obtuse triangle. Okay, and number four, 
which set of integers, integers just meaning positive and negative whole numbers, and I don't see any fractions, and we're not going to see negative because we're talking about the lengths of the sides of a triangle, but which cannot represent the sides? Remember, when you add any two sides, it must be greater than the third side. So if you add the first two in all of them, so 4 plus 7 is 11. 11 is bigger than 9. We'll do the next. 9 plus 10 is 19, bigger than 11. 6 plus 6 is 12, bigger than 11. But 4 plus 8 equals 12, which is not bigger than 12. So it's D. Remember, when you add any two sides, it must be greater than the third. Um, number 5. In triangle PQR, well, let's draw a picture. Says that angle Q and R are congruent. So we'll label those as congruent. PQ is 10x minus 14. PR is 2x plus 50. RQ is 4x minus 30. Find the value of x. Well, we don't know that it's an equilateral triangle. Um, we know because, because we don't know all three angles are congruent, so therefore I don't know anything about all three sides. But we do know that these two angles are congruent. So it's isosceles. And if these two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite, so this side and the side opposite here, this side, these two sides are congruent. So that means their lengths, 2x plus 50, are equal. So that equals 10x minus 14. So add the 14 over, and I don't have much room, so 50 plus 14 is 64. Subtract the 2x from 10x, you get 8x. Divide by 8. Find the value of x. 64 divided by 8 is 8, so x is 8. Number 6, the perimeter triangle ABC is 36. If angle A is congruent to B and ACX and ABX plus 3, find the value of X. So draw another triangle. This is angle A equals angle B. So therefore, we know the sides opposite, so opposite this side, or opposite that angle is this side, opposite that angle is this side. These two sides, we know, are congruent. It says that AC is X, and AB is X plus 3. Well, if AC is X because they're congruent, CB is also X. Now, with perimeter, perimeter is the distance around the outside of the triangle, so if we add x plus x plus x plus 3, we get the perimeter of 36. So subtract the 3, combine all 3x's, x plus x plus x is 3x, and 36 minus 3 is 33. Divide 33 by 3 to solve for x, and we get x is equal to 11. All right, the next page. So says, in the accompanying diagram, ACE is parallel to DB. So that's this line right here, parallel to this line. Remember to bring highlighters or colored pencils to your final. Parallel symbol is this. And DBA is 40. So if DBA is 40 degrees. We know that BAC is 40 degrees because alternate interior angles are congruent. BCE is 105. So BCE 
is 105. And we know its linear pair right here, this angle adjacent, has to add to it to get 180. So 180 minus 105 is 75. Which statement is true? The triangle, well the triangle ABC is this triangle. So before we can really classify the triangle, let's find that third angle. So 40 plus 75 is 115. Subtract that from 180. If you count up, uh, 115 plus 5 is um, 120. And then you need 60 more to get to 80. So this is 65 degrees. It's an isosceles. Well, no angles are congruent, so therefore no sides congruent. It's not isosceles. ABC is an obtuse triangle. No, nope. it's actually with all angles less than 90, it's acute. So that's out. Longest side of the triangle. Well, the longest side of a triangle is opposite the largest angle. So in this triangle, angle A, C, B, this angle here is the largest angle. So opposite this side here, that is the longest side of the triangle because the longest side of the triangle is opposite the largest angle. And the smallest side would be opposite, or the shortest side would be opposite the smallest angle. So AB is the longest side of the triangle. Number eight, in the accompanying diagram, we have another set of parallel lines. FDE is 25, which is marked. Measure of angle DFE is 130, which is marked. ABD is X. What's the value of X? Hmm, well, let's make our way. We know that with two parallel lines cut by a transversal, so this transversal here, the X is equal to um, this angle here, but we need this before we can add it together. So we know the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if we look at this triangle right here, if we have 180 and we subtract 25 and 130, so 180 minus 25 minus 130, we get 25. So that's this. So this is isosceles. I don't know if that'll help us. Um, this linear pair right here is the sum of 180. So if this is 130, this must be 50 is 30, 50 is 80. And then last, in this right triangle, there's a lot of triangles here from the beginning of the year. We have a sum of 180. But the acute angles you can look at have to add up to 90 because 180 minus this right angle, 90, is 90 degrees left. So this must be 40. So now x equals 40 plus 25, which is 65. We're coming to the end, and sorry my voice is a little scratchy. I think I'm getting that virus that everyone else has had. Um, number nine, the area of a circle is 49 pi. Now, the area of a circle is going to be on your reference sheet on the, for the final, so it's on the state reference sheet. It's always good to write it down, so area of a circle is equal to pi times r squared. Find in terms of pi the circumference, and the circumference formula is 2 pi r or pi d. So depending on if you have the diameter or radius will determine which formula you use. So going back to the area being 49 pi, we're going to substitute that for a. 49 pi equals pi r squared. Because the pi's are on both sides, you can cancel those out. And we end up with 49 equals r squared. Take the square root to undo the square. And the square root of 49 gives us a radius of 7. Well, you can simply double 7 right now to get the diameter, so 14, and then you could use either formula. If you're plugging into the right, it's just pi times 14, which we write it as 14 pi. 
Here it would just be 2 pi times 7, and 2 times 7 is 14 pi. So our circumference is 14 pi. What is the number of sides of a regular polygon? Remember, regular means all angles congruent, all sides congruent. Find the number of sides if each, each is 1. So if one interior angle is 135. Well, the interior angle sum formula, if you don't have it on your card, is n minus 2 times 180. Now, if you're trying to find each one, you would then divide by n, and that's equal to 135. So in this case, we're going to want to put this over 1 so that we have a proportion, and we're going to want to cross multiply. So 135 times n is 135n, and then 1 times n minus 2 times 180 is n minus 2 times 180. Now we're going to want to distribute, so 180 times n is 180n, minus 180 times 2, 360. Subtract the 180n to bring them all over to the left side so we can combine. And 135 minus 180 is a negative 45n. Now we're going to divide by negative 45. And 360 divided by 45 is 8, and negative over negative is positive. So it has 8 sides, which is the octagon. Number 11. Find the measure of each exterior. So I want one exterior angle of a regular polygon with five sides. So that's our pentagon. Well, you may already have it on your card or have it memorized, but to find the interangle sum, it would just be 5 minus 2. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Simon. Someone's made a huge mistake. This is exterior angle, and this is much easier because for every polygon, the exterior angle sum is 360. So we just take 360 divided by 5, and we get 72. So the measure of each exterior angle of a regular pentagon is 72 degrees. All right, last page. Use the information mark to find x and y. So we have our special right triangles, these next two questions. So if you haven't added those to your study card, you're going to want to do that. So here's the relationship, again, and this was in the last video. So in the isosceles, the two legs are the same, so x and x. And then the hypotenuse is whatever the leg is, radical 2. So since we have this one to the right, um, if they over to the right we have 12 radical 2, that means the x is 12. So each side is 12. So is there a y there? So that means x is 12. And the 30, 60, 90, opposite the shorter legs, so that would be opposite the 30 because that's smaller than 60, is the x. The hypotenuse is double that. And then opposite the 60 is x radical 3. So you want to find one of these two sides or be given one of those two sides first. And we are given the hypotenuse. So that means we're going to find the shorter leg because that's the relationship right here. The hypotenuse is double the shorter leg. So 16 is double 8. And then y would be 8 radical 3. So as I stated, if you haven't put these on the study card, make sure you put those on there. In the um, diagram below, AB is perpendicular to BE. That's why we see the right angle. And AC is perpendicular to CD. That's why we see another right angle. But this forms two overlapping triangles. So it might be good to split them apart. So I'm going to do that. Here's the green. And here's the orange. I can label the orange as A, B, E. And the green is A, C, D. 
Now it says AC is 11, AB is 6, ED is 10. Hmm, that's the, oh, oh no, 10 is here. Find AEX. So that means AEX, and then the whole, we add it, would be X plus 10. So this would be X plus 10. Now, these are similar triangles, and in similar triangles, I'm going to use this space right here, corresponding sides are proportional. So in the two triangles, AB corresponds with AC. So 6 to 11, and I went left to right. So left now would be X over right X plus 10. A proportion we saw by cross multiplying, 11 times X is 11X. And 6 times X plus 10, well 6 times X, 6X. 6 times 10, 60. Subtract the 6X, and we have 5X equals 60, divide by 5, and we get 12. Once AE, AE was the X, so therefore you need to answer the question, AE is 12. Last one, solve for X, and this is the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. So in this question here, it'd be good to draw the triangle separately. So we have two sides of this one. So I'm going to draw that upright. The longer leg is X, and the other leg making the right angle is 6. And then in the little triangle, the long leg is 6, the short leg is 3. And we set up a proportion just like we did before. So I'm going to do left to right 6 to 3 equals left to right X to 6. So 3 times X, 3X. 6 times 6 is 36. Divide by 3, and X is equal to 12. So be sure to continue filling out your pink study card. We have next week, so if you need some additional help, see me after school. And the final will then be the following week. We are going to go to third lunch for the final exam. So make sure for that test you plan accordingly, um, which may mean bringing a snack. All right, good luck.